Everyone who starts 3D printing starts the same. At the core of it, you buy a 3D printer because you think product ideas can solve problems. And it's true, they can. After setting up, you begin to microanalyze your life for things to fix. Your pens aren't organized? Here's a container. Headphones on the table? Have a headphone stand. Mouse too? Here's a stand. Every single thing that you want to have, you can. You print it. And that's when you discover CAD softwares. And before you know it, I was playing with my own designs. But at a certain point, I paused. You see, while I was designing something to keep my shower door shut, something kept bothering me. So essentially, this is my first rendition. This is what actually works already. This would act as a sort of pressure um, against the walls or against the glass walls, so then it'd slide into place properly, which would avoid it from you know being loose and then sliding back. This already works, but again, it's so simple and honestly, at a certain point, I just didn't think it was any good. It didn't look that good. It wouldn't be something that I would be proud of. And the question that kept rolling in my mind kept bothering me, why? And that led me to the only possible solution, product design. Design is the secret weapon of products. It's everywhere and yet invisible. This water bottle, for example. Why is the head shaped like this? Why is it only this tall? Down to every single detail. Why not a jar? Design is asking hard questions, getting solutions that lead to better choices. And in my case, the only question I had thought about was, did it work? And that just wasn't good enough anymore. So that led me here. The only things I remember from my first home. I was watching a Gox video about his interior design and he mentioned two things that helped. One, writing a manifesto, and two, doing a bunch of research. I wasn't too keen on doing the research, so I just started writing a manifesto. My rules were pretty simple. One, work as intended. This one's quite simple. If it didn't work the way it was intended, then what was the point of it at all? Two, made with care and consideration. I want the person who uses the product to feel like I put some thought into it, not just something that's been just put together. Three, puts a smile to my face. I recently got a painting from an artist friend called Max, and he made this. It always makes me laugh and brings a smile to my face, so I wanted to imbue that feeling into the products that I make. And with the manifesto now complete, it was time to go ahead with the making. When redesigning, there was a couple things I considered. If we're using it in the shower, one thing that we might want to consider is we don't want any pokey bits. We want it to be smooth because I wouldn't want to be showering and then suddenly if I'm moving around, hit something that pokes me and it hurt. So that was what my next process was. I started rounding up the corners like a candy cane, rounding at the top, making sure it's nice. And after rounding that bit, what I realized was instead of having just a big piece of rectangle that slides in, if I wanted to make it more universal, if I wanted to make it so other people could also use this model. And the next thing that I thought about was another way of also creating that pressure. With this fork, what it can do is as the, uh, you slide it into the glass, these two would bend together. I made the gap slightly larger than before, and these two forks would bend together like this and essentially create that pressure that would come from the one rectangle block. And after that, you know, I rounded out all the corners because at this point, you know, why not? Why not also round the inside? So this is a version where everything became rounded and the, the, the product at least looks much more, you know, I think, um, holistic this was already looking really good but one thing that you know uh and this kind of came out of nowhere you know with the make me laugh and make me smile um, i wanted to add some sort of design something that made it unique and one thing that i wanted to add at the time was a hole for someone let's say if they wanted to hang it somewhere and not put it in use they had a little hole um, that they could probably put like a rope through or something, a string through so they could hang it on their shower somewhere. And that's where this hole came about. This little hole right here, if it could focus, perfect. So that hole came about it right there. That's why it is this hole. This little gap, honestly, is a design. Essentially, once I reached that hole, one thing that I thought it looked like was kind of like a person bent over, like laughing in a sense, like this. We could imagine these are the legs 
and then that's kind of their tummy laughing, rolling over, and that's the mouth, them smiling. So that's kind of how this sort of look came about, and I honestly think it's hilarious. And then I just tested different sizes, what would make it more optimal. At this point, the design stayed the same. It was testing thickness of things, how wide things needed to be, how long things needed to be, and that was just finalizing that. The reason why, one of the tips that I wanted to bring into this video was you only have to print a cut of it, a slice of your model. This model originally was as thick as this notebook, really. And with it being that thick, you waste a lot of filament if you wanted to test, you know, as many times as I did. So what I did was I just printed a slice of it, like five layers, make sure that it would print properly. And uh, once I tested it in the, you know, the shower, which I'm about to show you, um, it worked properly already with this type sort of thickness. So that was kind of a blessing where, hey, I didn't need to print anything this thick. I could just do something this thick and it'd have the same effect, that same blocking effect that I wanted. So let me show you how it works. So this is the final piece right here that we've made, right? Um, the only thing that's different about it is we've made it slightly longer uh, to accommodate the window. We tried it make it making it shorter and it didn't work. So I just made it way longer and then the fitting just works for this one. Um, made it thicker and stuff like that. So, essentially how this would work is, let's slide this out. You have the short end on the outside and the long end on the inside, and essentially it just clipped like this. You can slide it out and it stay. You slide it in and it would stay. Once I put it out, watch this. So that's how it is usually. So I'm gonna put this in. It's gonna create a pressure on the windows to slide it in place here. So yeah, now I have a shower door that actually works <laughs> and it won't slide back. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope uh, you learned something. Uh, if you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and follow for more. It really helps the channel, really helps me. And if you haven't checked out Mail Plates, go ahead and check it. I'm also gonna be putting this somewhere on the website for a free download if you want it. If you've signed up for my newsletter, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If you haven't, go ahead and sign up. Uh, it's gonna be really fun. I'm hoping to post once a month. It'll just be on 3D updates, my updates, and just like tips and tricks, whatever. If you like 3D printing, it's gonna be for you. Uh, and I'm gonna make it really cool. So. Hope you guys sign up for that and hope you guys like it. Yeah, that's it for me. Hope you guys like it. Hope you guys have a great day. Have a rest, great rest of your day or night. If you have any questions or anything, let me know in the comments below or just tag me, follow me, whatever. I have Instagram, all that good stuff now. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye.